So in this lesson, we are going to learn how to find the relative or the local minimum and maximum of multivariable functions. So let's start off with the relative or the local minimum. So the relative or the local minimum occurs at a point where the value of the function is smaller than nearby values of the function in its domain. And then we have the relative or the local maximum, which also occurs at a point where the value of the function is larger than nearby values of the function in its domain. Now what this primarily means is that, considering a small region or an interval within the domain of the function, the point at which the smallest value is experienced is said to be the relative minimum point and the value of the function at that point is said to be the relative minimum value. In the same way, considering a small region or an interval within the domain of the function, the point at which the largest value is experienced is said to be the relative maximum point and the value of the function at that point is said to be the relative maximum value. Now, if a point AB is said to be either a relative minimum or a relative maximum, then that point is also a critical point. So let's talk about critical points. What then is a critical point? Now, a point AB is said to be a critical point if either of these two conditions is true. That is, if A, the gradient of the function at the point AB is equal to the zero vector, that is, if the first order partial derivative of the function with respect to x at the point AB is equal to zero, and we also have the first order partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the point AB also being equal to zero. So if these two components are equal to zero, then we say that the point AB is a critical point. Secondly, if fx of AB and or fy of AB do not exist, then we say that the point AB is a critical point. Now, as we said earlier, we said that if a point AB is either a relative minimum or a relative maximum, then that point is a critical point. Notice that the reverse is not true. This is because a critical point can either be a relative minimum point, a relative maximum point, or neither of the two. So in as much as a relative minimum or a relative maximum is a critical point, not all critical points are relative minimum or relative maximum because a critical point can neither be any of the two. Now let's move on to how to classify critical points. Now with this, we are going to talk about the D, which is the discriminant. Here we have four conditions outlined here. So for the first one, that is I, if the discriminant is greater than zero and the second order partial derivative of the function with respect to x at the point AB is also greater than zero, then the point we have AB is said to be the relative or the local minimum point. Condition two, if D is greater than zero and then fxx of AB is less than zero, then the point AB is said to be a relative or local maximum point. So kindly take note of the difference here. If fxx of AB is greater than zero, if D is also greater than zero, then the point AB is a relative or a local minimum point. However, if fxx of AB is less than zero, when D is greater than zero, then the point AB becomes a relative or a local maximum point. Condition three, if D is less than zero, then we have AB to be a saddle point. And then lastly, if D is equal to zero, then no conclusion can be made or can be drawn from this because the point can either be a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or even a saddle point. Now, to find the D, which is the discriminant that is given by this expression, that is D is equal to, that is the second order partial derivative of the function with respect to X at the point AB times second order partial derivative of the function with respect to Y at the point AB minus the mixed partial derivative of the function at the point AB and then we have the square of it. So basically, we have all the information we need to find the relative minimum and maximum of multivariable functions. So let's solve a few examples. So let's consider our first example. We are going to find and classify all the critical points of the function f of x, y equals 9 minus 2x plus 4y minus x squared minus 4y squared. So in this example, we are going to do two things. The first is to find the critical points and then we try to classify them. 
So to find the critical point, what we need to do is to find the first order partial derivatives of the function with respect to x and then y, and then we set them to zero. So first we want to find fx. fx is the first order partial derivative of the function with respect to x. So we differentiate nine, we have zero. We differentiate negative two x, we have negative two. We differentiate four y, it goes to zero. We differentiate negative x square, and thus we have negative two x, and then we differentiate negative four y square, and then we have zero. So this is fx. And then for fy, we also differentiate with respect to y. Nine goes to zero, negative two x also goes to zero. For four y, we have four, negative x squared goes to zero and then this we have negative four y squared that becomes negative eight y so we set both of them to zero so that we have zero equals negative two minus two x we transpose this term to the left hand side we have two x equals negative two we divide through by two and then we have x to be equal to negative one so this is the value of x next we move on to fy so we set this also to zero we have four minus eight y on the right hand side we transpose this to the left hand side that becomes eight y and this is equal to four we divide through by eight and then we have y to be equal to one over two so this is also the value for y now we have the critical point or the point of interest to be the point negative one 1 over 2. So this is our critical point at this point in time or better still our point of interest. Now to classify the critical point what we need to do is to find the second order partial derivative of the function with respect to x with respect to y and then we also find the mixed partial derivative of the function. So that is what we are going to do next. So we are going to find first of all fxx. So Considering this function, we are going to differentiate this again with respect to x and that becomes the second order partial derivative of the function with respect to x. So we differentiate this, this is a constant, we have 0, we differentiate this, that becomes negative 2. And then we move on to f, y, y, we differentiate this function again with respect to y and this becomes the second order partial derivative of the function with respect to y. So this is a constant, it goes to zero, this becomes negative eight. And then for fxy, which is the mixed partial derivative of the function, considering the function fx equals negative two minus two x, we are going to differentiate this function with respect to y. And notice that because we don't have any y term, we treat these two terms as constants, and then this is equal to zero. Next. We want to find fxx of this point, which is negative 1, 1 over 2. And because this is a constant term, I mean it's equal to, I mean the same value, negative 2. And then also for fyy of the point negative 1, 1 over 2, we also have a constant term, which is negative 8. And then for f, so let me do that here, for fxy. Of the point negative 1 1 over 2 we also have a constant term which is 0 so I mean no effects there's no changes to it now the next thing is to find what we call the discriminant and that is given by the formula fxx of the point negative 1 1 over 2 times fyy of the same point minus fxy of that same point and this time we have the square of it so let's try to find the discriminant so we have fxx of negative 1 1 over 2 to be negative 2 fyy of negative 1 1 over 2 to be negative 8 and then minus 0 square so this becomes negative 2 times negative 8 that is 16 16 minus 0 is still 16 so we have d to be equal to 16. now d is greater than 0 and then fxx of negative 1 1 over 2 is less than 0. so let's look at the condition that is 
if d is greater than zero and then fxx of the point a b is less than zero then it means the point a b is a relative or a local maximum point so since d is greater than zero so let's write that here since d is greater than zero and fxx at the point negative one one over two is less than zero then the point negative one one over two is a relative or a local a local maximum point this is a relative or a local maximum point and let's find the relative or the local maximum value so to find the relative or the local maximum value we need to find the value of the function at this point so we are going to input negative 1 1 over 2 in place of x and y in this function in this function so that becomes that becomes 9 minus so better still i can just do it here let me just do it here so we want to find f of negative 1 1 over 2 so that will be equal to we have 9 minus 2 times x that is negative 1 plus 4 times y that is 1 over 2 minus negative 1 square minus 4 times 1 over 2 all square so this becomes 9 plus 2 and then plus plus another 2 minus 1 so this becomes 1 over 2 all square becomes 1 over 4 so we have 4 cancelling out 4 okay and thus we have negative 1 so minus 1 so we have 2 minus 1 minus 1 this goes away and then we have 9 plus 2 which is 11 therefore we have f of negative 1 1 over 2 to be equal to 11 therefore this is this is said to be the relative or the local the local maximum value and then it occurs at the point negative 1 1 over 2 hence this point is also a critical point this is a critical point so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye